Good morning, guys. It's 6 a.m., beautiful day. Finally have a little clearing in the smoke. We have just been covered in smoke for the last like few weeks, honestly. And uh, today's pretty clear. The plan is I wanna fly to a lake just over the hill from here. I'm like talking a 15, maybe less than that minute flight and do a little fishing. And I know you guys have been watching. I've been dabbling in fishing, having very limited success. So I'm hoping I can change that today. So let's get fired up and go fishing. I'm Trent Palmer, I fly drones for a living and bush planes for fun. Follow along as I journey off the beaten path of aviation. exactly 15 minutes all right just made it to our spot basically I'm right next to a reservoir where one of the streams that run and feed the reservoir meet the reservoir my whole plan is to go and work my way up into the trees here and see if there's any fish and as you guys have kind of seen I've been starting to get into fishing with very minimal success started with a spin rod then went to a western fly setup and now I'm on to the tenkara thing which to me actually appeals to me more because of its simplicity and how light and compact this is. I mean, this could live in the plane at all times. And if I see somewhere that looks fishable, pull it out and try it out. So the plan is today, I'm gonna go with the ultralight, super simple setup with the Tenkara and a little fly on the end. Let's hike up the stream and see if there's any fish in it. La, la, le, la, la, le. You guys are gonna have to bear with me. I am uh, running on the GoPro right now just to try to keep this light. I didn't wanna lug my whole camera bag and my regular camera along. So I apologize in advance for the video and audio quality on this. So I'm trying to think of what's new. Uh, obviously a few of you guys probably noticed I was not at Oshkosh this year, unfortunately. And that was honestly just the combination of poor planning on my part and poor timing on some other obligations I had. And so I was unfortunately unable to make it. Outside of that, everything else is pretty good. House is good, still no hanger. Oh, it's been a, a nightmare. And I haven't really filled you guys in on the whole hanger thing in a long time. Basically, I thought I would have my hanger built and done this last spring. And here we are moving in towards the end of summer. I haven't even started. Basically, I put down a design deposit for the first set of plans on a building back, I don't know, end of last year. I think it was November or December, and then here we are nine, 10 months later, didn't even get a set of plans, so I'm trying to get my money back from that company and find a new company to go with. So if any of you guys have any recommendations or, or work for a building company that makes steel buildings like a hangar, let me know. I do plan on erecting it myself, but just looking for the right company to go with as far as building the actual building or the kit. So anyway, let's get to doing some fishing. This is the creek that I'm thinking, or I read online, should have trout in it. I don't know with how warm the temps have been, if they're gonna be hanging out 
this low down in the creek, they might have all moved way upstream to where it might be cooler coming right out of the spring that feeds the creek. But either way, I figure it's worth looking for some spots, throw on a fly in and see what happens. First off, I'm just gonna see if we might not be able to see a couple fish, spook a few fish just so I know they're in there. Sure isn't acting like there's anything in there. I am not even seeing a single fish spook. I can see if there's something in there, but like right where I'm at, I don't know if you guys can see. There's so much overhead, I can't even really cast in most of these spots. I'm casting right into my own shadow. All right, so I didn't see even a single indication of any fish. And uh, this creek is so tight, just with all the scrub brush and trees around, you can't even like get a cast in. So I'm gonna pull an audible. We're gonna go just over to the next stream up, which is more of a, a little river. Uh, see if we can find any fish over there. All right, onward and upward. Well, we were here for such a short amount of time, my engine's still warm, but I guess now's a good time for me to tell you guys about my pre-takeoff checklist. Basically, it's a flow. Starting from the left side of the panel, working my way over, checking that both lanes of the engine control units, basically there's dual ECUs for this engine, both are on. I'm not showing any errors on the light. I'll go over to my engine monitoring system and confirm if one of those were to turn off, let's say I turn off lane A, I felt a little jolt in the engine. I lost lane A and about half the gauges, and I also get a little red light indicating that I have a lane issue. So really when I check those two lanes separately, like doing this, it's just confirming that the light's working because, and that the gauge is working. After that, I just check both fuel pumps, make sure both are working. I will take off with both on. Checking that the parking brake is off, fuel is on. I've got the trim set to full forward. I'm looking at that up here. I've got half flaps. You know, I like to rotate and pull full flaps. On a Kit Fox, I might as well just start with full flaps because there's really not that much that I save in the form of drag when I start with half flaps. Flight controls are free and correct. Double checking the fuel that it didn't just fall out while we were sitting there. And that is pretty much it. I'm gonna see how these boots feel. They feel pretty good. I, think, uh, I don't think I should have any problems. Anyway, that's it. And for a short field takeoff, because of the turbo, what I'll do is I'll hold the brakes, roll into full power, wait for it to build boost, then release the brakes, and then the tail will come up pretty quick and then just flaps and rotate again. I could just have started that roll with full flaps, but it's just habit. I like uh, pulling full flaps. It makes me feel like I'm doing more or something. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see this. I took that other GoPro off my wing to use for when I was fishing. There's another river up here that flows in to this reservoir and I know there's fish in it. I think it's just notorious that the fish in there because it's so oftenly fished or so regularly fished. They're pretty smart, given that I'm not that smart when it comes to fishing. I, uh, I was trying to avoid coming here because I think I probably have less chance catching the fish that are in there versus the other one. But with the other one, I, I like literally didn't even see a single fish that I like spooked or anything. So we're gonna give this spot a shot. This is a fun one. This is like, you gotta get Pretty slow, pretty early. Keep it up against these trees. And then we're gonna fly right down the river and we're gonna land at this basically invisible runway. Like, it's impossible to see this thing, so. Um, I've been here a few times before, so I know exactly where I'm going. But it doesn't change the fact that it's kinda a little spooky coming over these trees. I'm gonna drop it in. Try to touch down right after this little pile. There we go, and we'll just roll it straight up here. Perfect. Landed a little hot on that one because I came over those trees and pushed the nose down and instead of slowing up for landing, I kind of zoomed down to a landing, but whatever, it worked. All right, new spot, new river. We're gonna give this another shot. Still, I don't know how high my confidence is that I'll catch anything, but 
hey, it's fishing. It's half of it is just getting out here and the thrill of the chase. So anyway, this spot's a pretty fun one. It's one that Quinn pioneered. There's actually a really nice little camp spot back here that at some point we need to come camp at. But for today, let's just go fishing. Okay, plane is good. Let's get going. So yeah, it's funny, compared to the Western fly setup, this one's obviously much more light and compact, which kind of lends itself to bush flying or even if we were gonna take the electric dirt bikes or the side-by-side, -side, anything, having it compact helps. But the other thing is because these rods are so long and you run such a thin and short line, you're able to basically create a pretty good presentation of the fly relatively easily, at least in my experience, compared to the standard Western fly setup. So the few times I have taken this out, I've actually had a lot better luck with this thing than I had previously had ever with the Western fly setup. And I love how quick it, it, you can basically have it set up or break it back down, but. Okay, I am looking for a little bit more white water than this with how warm the water temps are right now. I know that the fish are gonna be staying in the really oxygenated areas of the river. So I'm gonna look for somewhere with some white water or some bubbles going down. Again, I don't really know what I'm doing, but I know that much. All right, so far I am getting completely skunked. I saw one small fish that I did scare away. So it gives me hope. I know that there are fish in here because I did catch one here yesterday when I didn't bring my camera gear. All right, got me a nice little, I don't know, 10 inch rainbow. Beautiful little fish. Go ahead and let him go. So there are fish in here, but, oh, frustrating. Well guys, I hate to say it, but I think we got skunked today. I uh, did my best, but I literally saw one tiny little fish that I spooked. But other than that, I didn't see anything. You know, if I saw fish rising, like getting bugs off the surface, I'd probably be sticking around a little longer, but with how little action I'm seeing, I think I'm gonna work my way back. I got like a probably two mile hike back to the plane. So I'm gonna start working my way. <laughs> down the, the thick of this. Well, I did not catch anything. I'm not gonna call it a failure though because I was thinking about it on the way back and if it was super easy for me to get into fishing or Tenkara fishing and I just had immediate success, I'd probably get bored with it. Same goes with like bush flying and a lot of the other activities I'm into, it's the challenge and the skill that you have to build to appreciate that craft that makes it fun. So if nothing else, I gotta come out, fly my plane, go on a pretty cool little hike up the river and practice my little technique as far as presentation and try some different flies and kind of learn about the flow of the river and where the fish might be. So overall, I'm gonna call it a practice day for learning some skills. Now, while on the topic of new skills, I think this is a good time for me to say thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. For those that don't know, Skillshare is an online learning community for creative and curious people. They've got thousands of classes on everything from photography and video to graphic design, illustration, interior design, and more. Now I get messages and comments all the time from people asking how to get into drone flying like I do, or even creating a YouTube channel. Maybe you go out and do fun stuff and you feel like it'd be a cool thing to create a channel about, which I highly recommend anyone that's thinking of doing that. I think the more free content we can get out there, the better. There are definitely classes about that on Skillshare. One class in particular is called YouTube Success by Marquez Brownlee, basically script, shoot, and edit. If you guys don't know who MKHB is, He's an awesome YouTube uh, tech guy that reviews all this new stuff and he has a really, really well done channel. So anyway, guys, I think learning and building new skills is something that we should all be doing and staying active on. Keep our brains current, keep you active, keep growing. And Skillshare is a great way to do it. They don't run any ads. The whole website is designed around learning, so it's super easy. And most of the classes are pretty short and they're all separated into smaller sections so you can kind of chip away at them in your spare time. So anyway, the first thousand of you to click the link below will get a free trial of premium membership so you can explore your creativity. Thanks again, Skillshare, for sponsoring this one. Let's get locked and loaded, get out of here before it gets any warmer or any windier. 
Man, it is hot out already. It's 85 up here at 6,100 feet. Jump gonna adjust right now. All right, let's make a dust cloud and get out of here. This is another section of the creek that might be worth exploring when, uh, when the temps cool down and then the fish aren't just sitting in all the cold water. Anyway guys, sorry I didn't catch any fish and actually I don't know why I'm apologizing to you. Sorry for me, I'm bummed I didn't catch any fish, but the quest for that elusive native mountain, river, or spring trout continues. And really it's the thrill of the hunt. Like I said, if it was super easy and I just had instant success, I'd probably already be bored of it. But I swear to you, I will figure it out and I will get to where I can actually catch fish. So mark my word, I'm not giving up yet. But anyway, I think I'm gonna wrap this one up here. You guys know the drill. Like this video if you do. Subscribe if you haven't. Come be my wingman. See you on the next one. Peace.